With One UI 8.5 being with us for a while now, we've uncovered some things about it that you might want to know. Here are five hidden features in One UI 8.5. Welcome back to Sam Mobile TV. You're here with Daniel. I've got One UI 8.5 on my S25 Ultra, and I've been using it, geez, for about two months now. In that time, there's some hidden stuff that we've found and I thought you'd like to know. First one is the edge panels. Well, not the edge panels because we know what the edge panels are. In fact, now you can actually utilize edge panels properly when the phone is rotated in landscape mode. So if I rotate into landscape mode here, so if I pull out from the side, your edge panels come up. Now it only shows apps edge. So I can't cycle through like you normally can when edge panels are in portrait mode. I've only got the option to have just the apps edge so I can launch apps from here, which is fine because it just means I can quickly launch apps in landscape mode. So if I wanted to launch apps that sort of take advantage of that, like YouTube, for example, can jump straight into it. To turn it on, or if it's not on by default, I should say, which it most certainly normally is, you just go into settings, you go into display and go into edge panels. And there is a show in landscape mode and it lets you know apps panel only. There's no other panels that it works with. The next one, we kind of uncovered this the other day when going through the new camera assistant with One UI 8.5. But when you launch the camera, normally you can see you get all these things at the top here. I've removed them. Let me show you how. So go into settings for the camera and go into camera assistant. And right down the bottom, there is customize indicators. And what you can do is for photo mode or video mode, you can turn on or off any of those indicators that sit at the top. And if you want to see what it looks like with them there, you literally just turn them all on. And then you can have them all at the top. Or should you want nothing and have a clean experience at the top, you just go through and turn them all off. And then I'll even turn off the, where is it, 3D capture. So you can see what it's going to look like completely clean at the top there. The reason why it's nice to have it clean is because those indicators, you don't actually need them because you can control all of those same things from the bottom menu with the four dots. So that new camera assistant feature in the settings, if you want to make it clean, or if you just want to add them all in there, you just go into here for both photo and video, and you have the option to customize it to the way you like it. Next one is to do with the lock screen. Now, Samsung have kind of done a lot with the lock screen in the last few generations of One UI. You can see it's still quite buggy in the version of One UI 8.5 that I've got here. But what you can do is I can go into edit lock screen. And what Samsung have enabled now is the ability to add this little gradient. So you can see at the top there, you can sort of pull down on the photo and it adds in a little gradient from top to bottom, kind of extending the lock screen wallpaper out, but also giving it a nice little effect. And it kind of utilizes the colors that are already there at the top part of the screen to extend it out, giving you a little bit more screen real estate with your wallpaper, but also creating a nice little effect. And you can hit done and it's buggy. Of course it is, but you get the idea of what it's meant to look like from the edit. And that's meant to extend that out into the lock screen wallpaper as well. And no, the actual blur isn't a bug. You can see in our Fold 6 hands-on with the One UI 8.5, same effect is there. Then there's a feature that's part of an app that I don't think a lot of people are really talking about. And that is collections. Collections is kind of replacing stories. Basically, Samsung have just decided rather than it being a story section, it's a collection section. Hmm. So it still has stories as part of the feature, but it also then collects things like your locations. So you can sort of go through locations of different photos. And it's also got different shot types and different activity types. So are there photos that are AI edited or just edited in general? You've got documents and you can edit collections. So you can go through and it will show you what sort of collections you want to showcase. Stories, people, locations, documents, activity, shot types, and my tags. And you can sort of rearrange the order, to sort of show you what you need to know. And in the story section, you can describe your story here. Football related videos. And it will sort of pull together from AI what football related content it has. And also create a collection or a story based off of that. 
There we go. Gives you a time frame, gives you clips, adds some music. Beautiful. That is football because he's wearing a Newcastle United. Within that too, in the settings in Gallery Labs, you've got an option here to add in different collection types. So activity, shot types, and my tags are optional categories that you can go in here and turn on should you want them in there. And the last hidden one that I'm going to show you is inside device care in the three dots, in the settings, and it's here. Block apps with excessive ads. So basically what this does is apps that send frequent advertisement notifications will be put into deep sleep to prevent them from bothering you. So if you get completely bombarded with sort of advertisement notifications from certain apps and you hate it, it will kind of put that app or that sort of notification into a deep sleep so they just don't bother you excessively. Now it's got option here to have basic blocking. So apps identified by Samsung as sending frequent ads will be blocked whenever they're detected. And you've got a toggle here for intelligent blocking. So notifications are analyzed on your phone to determine whether they're ads and blocked if they're frequent. Now it's sort of AI determinated. So it won't always be accurate. It might not be perfect, but it's there with as a toggle as an option. Should it be recognized and determined that that's the case, that will kick in and activate. So that's just five of the hidden stuff that I've kind of found and sort of think is important to highlight about One UI 8.5. It still feels like it's a long way away, even though the S26 Ultra launch is probably just under six weeks away now. Anyway, let me know if you've learned anything new. Let me know if you're excited about One UI 8.5. There's still going to be features that hopefully get updated as betas and official drops roll out. But for now, this is what we've got. So hopefully you enjoy it. Hit subscribe to Sam Mobile TV to follow that journey. Make sure you go check out our website and all our socials. I will see you guys next time. Thanks.